high school football fans. Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts, a clash of styles, out to talk if we love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. From Cy Donnelly Field in South Huntington, Long Island, the Varsity Media Sports Network presents this Catholic Football League showdown presented by Catholic Health featuring the visiting Rams of Fordham Prep and the Friars of St. Anthony's. Good evening, everyone. Dylan Butler here with Pat Godfrey. And uh, Pat, this is another Great showdown between uh, two Catholic League programs, a a Fordham prep team that has struggled a little bit. They've lost four in a row, but you got to consider their competition, right? Like they were in every one of these games outside of that loss to Holy Trinity. They lost to Kellenberg, more Catholic, Chaminade, their schedule. uh, And now you add St. Anthony's into it has been second to none. Absolutely. You know, it's been very challenging for Fordham Prep. They've gone through a, a true gauntlet in the schedule. But if anything, it should give them a lot of, of confidence going into the AA1 playoffs later on in November. Huge opportunity tonight to play spoiler at St. Anthony's homecoming. And we always talk about it. You know, no better atmosphere on Long Island on a Friday night than Cy Donnelly Field here in South Huntington. So golden opportunity for the Rams to come in here and look to see if they can get the upset. Going to be a, a tall order against one of the top teams in the state in the St. Anthony's Friars. We'll take a look at their players to watch for the visitors from Fordham Prep. And Charlie English, a guy who does a little bit of everything for Fordham, you see his numbers carrying the football, and that's going to be important tonight. We'll get to the reason why as we go forward. But 70 carries, 346 yards, and six touchdowns. He's got the receptions as well. And Josiah Moore, they're both really good defensively. Head coach Pat Dean says, if Charlie English is the captain of our defense, Josiah Moore is the general. You see his numbers there, 23 tackles, two and a half sacks, two forced fumbles. Has some really solid offers as well or or interest from Springfield, Hobart, Amherst. Also a wrestler. Um, We expect his hands will be full here today with a very stout, uh, explosive offense for St. Anthony's, but Josiah Moore... Uh, is going to be up for the task. Absolutely. You know, uh, Fordham Prep's going to be leaning on both of their seniors as they come into this hostile environment. You know, you highlighted that Josiah Moore is an excellent wrestler, Charlie English, a great lacrosse player, so a couple of dual sport athletes over there for the Rams and looking to step up in a very big way tonight in order to, uh, to get some success against these St. Anthony's Friars. Speaking of the Friars of St. Anthony's, let's take a look at their players to watch, and we could have named probably 30 different guys, <laughs> Pat, uh, but tonight we'll look at Darius Morant. Uh, they're, they're part of their, their uh, dual running back threat when you add in a, a Frank Ruda as well. Morant, a senior here. It's homecoming. You see his number is 38 carries, 224 and 3. And Jojo DiChiaro on the other side, 44 tackles out of that middle linebacker spot, three for a loss, a sack, and a forced fumble. Both of these guys, it's been a long time since they played here at Sidonelli. There's not many home games left, so they're going to be pretty excited here for this opportunity in front of another big crowd. Absolutely. Two seniors looking to make the most of their last homecoming here at St. Anthony's. Both guys been key contributors this year to Chero, really filling in seamlessly for Andrew Bardak's departure, uh, you know, moving on to college, and additionally, Morant, a a great running back and just one of many weapons in the Swiss Army knife that is the St. Anthony's offense. Good evening, and 
You will take a quick break for the anthem. We'll return with more of our pregame coverage of this Catholic Football League showdown presented by Catholic Health on the Varsity Media Sports Network. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts. A clash of styles, out into talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. Welcome back to Cy Donnelly Field here at St. Anthony's where the Friars are taking on the Rams of Fordham Prep. It's been a very long time, Pat Godfrey, since we've seen these two teams play here at St. Anthony's. You see it there, a 39-14 win for the Friars in the 2010 Triple H uh, semifinals. Pat, both teams were 9-0 and heading into that game. Uh, Charlie Rafa had a terrific game, 6 of 8 for 178 and 3. The Friars advanced to their 12th straight Catholic Triple A championship where they went on to beat Iowa Prep in the final. And uh, the great Richie Reichert, of course, the legendary head coach here at St. Anthony's, he picked up his 200th career win in that game. Absolutely. You know, uh, you know that was a long, long ride back to the Bronx for Ford and Prep. <laughs> uh, and they're looking to avoid that type of feeling as they head back tonight, which can be a, can be a tough journey. Yeah, so. Pat, I was there that night. It was so, it was, they, both teams are 9-0. Uh, it was, uh, you had Max Kinder as the quarterback, a, a big strong-arm QB for Fordham Prep. Charlie Raffitt was a great duel. Both teams, I don't know, but uh, St. Anthony's, you know, here under the lights uh, showed what, who they were and who they are and went on to win that. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape between this year's combatants, and you see, obviously, the way St. Anthony's is scoring the ball and, and moving the ball. Incredible numbers, right? 353 yards passing per game for... Dante Torres, uh, significantly less for Fordham. Points scored as well, more for St. Anthony's. The tackles per game, a little bit more for St. Anthony's as well. Fordham Prep, though, despite their losses, the one thing you could say, Pat, as well, in our conversation with their head coach, Pat Dean, was, you know, their, their defense has round the corner these last couple of games, especially the, he said, especially the Chaminade game. They lost that game 10-6 at home, had an opportunity, obviously, to, to win that. You know, they sputtered a little bit on the offensive side. But their defense, he said, it, it's, they're playing now as a, as a unit, uh, as, a, as a collective group, which is going to be important for them tonight. Absolutely. They're going to have to play as a unit tonight because this St. Anthony's offensive attack, you saw the stats just now, uh, absolutely unstoppable to this point in the year. Uh, you know, Andre Torres, just one of the elite quarterbacks in all of New York State football right now. Uh, Coach Minucci was just raving about him going into this game, about his ability to read defenses, and then you pair that together with his exceptional arm talent and his ability to run the ball. He's a very dynamic threat, and Fordham Prep is going to really have to buckle down on that side of the ball if they want any chance of walking out of uh, South Huntington as victors tonight. Pat, let's take a look at the keys for the game. As we spoke to both head coaches for Fordham Prep, it's about controlling the football, putting together drives, eating up that clock, keeping that St. Anthony's offense off the field. Don't give up the big play. Pat said, listen, you know, if you give up four yards, five yards, nothing big over the top, none of those big 70-yard opportunities that St. Anthony's obviously we know can do. And also conversely, make a big player too. For St. Anthony's, you want to also be able to establish a run. That's why Morant was the guy we mentioned before. You want to make good decisions as well and uh, play solidly defensively. Absolutely. I think tempo is going to be invaluable for Fordham Prep during this game. Let's send it down to the field. Yeah. 
Let's take a quick break here at Side Only Field, opening kickoff when we return on the Varsity Media Sports Network. One more time. One more. One more. Ready, stand. Yeah! Two. One. One more, man. Oh, man. All right, little bro. One more. Great stuff here pre-game. Pat, always one of the best atmospheres on Long Island. And, uh, you know, in our conversation with Joe Minucci, he said it's been a while, hasn't it, since, since they've been here at home. They've had this incredible uh, road trip, if you will, through Monsignor Farrell. And you had uh, Chaminade on the road as well. Rutgers, right, for St. Joe's Metuchen. So it's good for them to be back here in front of this big atmosphere. We will uh, send it down to the field to John Perez. A little bit of breaking news in terms of the St. Anthony's roster that's uh, uh, pretty uh, important here. John. Guys, we caught up with St. Anthony's head coach Joe Minucci before the game and a little bit of breaking news. K.J. Duff, one of the top wide receivers in the class of 2024, out tonight. He's had nagging injuries all year. They believe that this is precautionary. You're going to skip him this week, hoping that he's back next week. Having said that, though, St. Anthony's has a ton in the war chest. They're going to put Ian Strong in his place. So we'll see how St. Anthony's navigates tonight without Duff. Guys, back to you. Thanks, John. And, uh, yeah, Pat, we heard it right there. Uh, K.J. Duff, uh, the best or one of the best receivers, certainly not only on this team, but in the tri-state area, uh, out for this game. The embarrassment of riches, though, that you have with St. Anthony's, you can have an Ian Strong start in his place. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously the numbers that Ian's put up in his first year, right, playing both sides of the football have been mind-blowing. It, it is kind of amazing. You know, how does Coach Minucci come up with these guys? Kenya Miles injured in week two. He's a six foot three, 180 pound receiver who's getting a lot of Division One interest. Uh, KJ Duff goes down, and that's for most teams in this area a, almost a death blow yeah. losing a player of that kind of uh, kind of talent level. But the ability to just sub in a guy like Ian Strong, six foot four, 200 pounds, the Rutgers commit, who has been dynamic on both sides of the ball, is just kind of a testament to the level of, of talent that has been built up within this program. It's a good look at number one, K.J. Duff. And, uh, again, the, the, the hope certainly, and, and we'll speak more about their future schedule, but, you know, the, the big game, right? Obviously, you know, look, the, you know, the whole cliche, you take each game and they come, you have to play each game. And that is 100% true in this league, right? Because if you, if you sleep on any team, that could be an L for you on the week. But if St. Anthony's takes care of business as we expect they should, there's head coach Joe Minucci. Uh, then you got a big battle against Stepanak, which ultimately should be for the number one seed in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, and that's going to feel like a playoff game in itself. You know, trying to vie for that number one seed means a first-round bye this year. That's a new wrinkle in the Catholic system. So they're going to really be looking to hit their stride as they enter the late, months of or the late weeks of October, heading into that big November stretch, looking to come away with a number, another AAA title. And also, Pat, if we project it the right way, and it's certainly part of that conversation going around, right? If you are the one, then you will obviously avoid that two, three. And, and, and there's a pretty clear separation, I think, not only in our minds, but in others, the top three and below that, 
So the top three is St. Anthony, uh, uh, Spellman, and uh, – right, sorry. Stepanak and Iona Prep in whatever order you want to put them. And then below that is kind of everybody else at this point. So uh, Fordham Prep will kick the ball off, and we are underway here under the lights at Cy Donnelly Field. Nice return, spin to the outside. Ooh. Breaking some tackles, a getting out past midfield. There is one of our players to watch, Darius Moran. A terrific return to set up a guy in Dante Torres who we saw how good he was a year ago, and somehow he's even elevated his game, Pat, this year. An incredible year for number three right there in white, Dante Torres, the Fordham University verbal commit, uh, has been remarkable this season. You know, what's always impressed me the most, and especially this year out of Dante Torres, is just the efficiency at which he operates in the quarterback position for the St. Anthony's offense. Right now, he's completing 68% of his passes, which is almost unheard of at the NFL level, uh, or is, is elite for the NFL level. So, you know, considering that he's doing this in, in high school is just a testament to his ability to read defenses and distribute the ball to his many talented weapons on the edge at St. Anthony's. Yeah, 1,700 yards, and as you mentioned, that completion percentage, incredible. First handoff and a good stuff at the line. That was Frank Ruda, the running back, and we'll take a look at the starters for St. Anthony's. Their starting lineup is presented by Body Armor. We mentioned Torres as the quarterback. Obviously, too, you've got Ruda, and we'll get to that actually after this play. Well, here you go. Ruda, Matos, Longo, Mengi, we thought we'd have Duff, obviously, before the game. Uh, he is out for Strong as another really good run by Ruda. Also, to, com com to complete that offense of starters, the big guys up front, you've got Chanchuli, Novelli, Dowling, Oliva, and Murphy. Yeah, you know, Dylan, we tend to sometimes forget about the big uglies up front, but as a former center, always got to give those guys their due. They played very, very well, giving Dante Torres enough time to make his reads back there, and that's really been a key to success all year for the St. Anthony's O. Another big run. Ruda breaks a tackle, and he's taken down at about the five-yard line. Charlie English with the tackle. But that's exactly what Minucci said. We want to run the football, establish the run. And Root has done that as the lead back. And, you know, if Fordham Prep can't stop the run tonight, they're going to be in for some trouble. You know, St. Anthony's looking to open everything up, you know, by establishing Frank Ruta, Darius Morant, and number 27, Ruta, just exceptional so far in this drive. More Ruta. Stiff arm. Touchdown, St. Anthony's. And that was like a hot, hot knife through butter right there. Didn't even have to think about throwing the ball that whole drive. Joe Minucci is going to be real happy with the way that his team got out the gates to set the tone here Friday night at Cy Donnelly Field. Yeah, Frank Ruda continuing his terrific season. I love the stiff arm right here. Get out of my way. I'm getting in the end zone. Ruda, his fifth touchdown of the season. And the point after attempt is up. And, and, you know, this is coming off a season where I believe, you know, Frank Ruda as a junior had about 14 touchdowns. So just as a player, has a nose for the end zone, makes it happen, and a uh, great way to start off your senior homecoming if you're number 27. So Ruda... Give St. Anthony's a lead, and obviously we got to give credit to the Morant, right? He's the other part of that running attack, and obviously his return was monumental there, getting into Fordham Prep zone, and, and, and pretty much an ideal start for, for St. Anthony's. Absolutely, you know, and both running backs earning little style points along the way. Yeah. Darius Morant coming out the gate, hitting that circle button with the spin move for the nice <laughs> long return, and then Frank Ruta finishing off the drive with a great stiff arm. So they're going to look to keep that going uh, as they, they establish themselves in this game. An unenviable situation for Fordham Prep. And the Rams, again, two and four, one and four in the league. They've got a sophomore quarterback, and we'll talk more about him after this kickoff, but Jonathan Bailey, 
Their sophomore quarterback was called up this week. Their usual starter is Matt Moorhead. He's injured. The junior has thrown for 725 yards and six touchdowns. But he's banged up. And the call was made. Bring him up from the JV. And that's uh, what Bailey is going to have to do. A short return. Looks like Zal Lamb on that return right there. But, you know, absolutely, Dylan. This is a huge challenge for Jonathan Bailey. It's his first, first start at the varsity level, an unenviable position for a sophomore, but he's going to have to grow up real quick in this situation. Uh, his coach, uh, Pat Dean, has a lot of confidence in his ability to come out here and perform tonight. Already six foot two, 180 pounds as oh. just a sophomore. So he's going to have the physical skill set to succeed. It's just a matter of whether or not he can uh, hold up under these bright lights in his first game at the varsity level. Yeah, there is Bailey, a tremendous track and field star uh, in his freshman year, a hurdles champion in the Catholic League. He hands off. There is Charlie English. Good look and run there for the senior. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Ford and Prep on offense. This is presented by Body Armor. You've got English, Moore, guys, and Shetta and Duty up front. Carnaccio, Adagoke, Regan, Musia, and Semper Vivo. And this Fordham, Fordham prep offense going to have a lot of pressure on their shoulders tonight, looking to keep up with the potent attack on the other side of the ball. That was a gain of seven on first down. And this is what they want to do with Anchetta. Run up to the outside. He's stopped. We'll take a look at the defense now for St. Anthony's, presented by Body Armor. You've got a front four of Mackle, Policastro, Dunn, and Cook. Your linebacking group of Strong, DiCiero, and Vardaro. Your corners are Platt and Jenkins. At safety is Spina and Platania. So no gain there on second down. Third and three now for Ford and Prep from their own 26-yard line. Interesting third down to watch. You know, St. Anthony's has had some difficulty on the defensive side of the ball in getting off the field, something they're looking to fine-tune as they prepare themselves for a playoff run. Really going to hope to clamp down in these third down type situations tonight. That's a good look at Bailey, the sophomore. 6'2", 180. High snap. Look at the defense, though, for St. Anthony's. They swarm to the football. And, and who else, right, but Ian Strong on this defense for, for St. Anthony's. Guy's been a dominant player all year round, or all year long, both sides of the ball, and, uh, and stepping up in a big way early on on defense. So three and out for Fordham, and you see number one back there to punt. That's Liam Conlon. He is a Gaelic football player, so watch the way that he'll punt. He'll do that all run out and, and – the sideline kick, he's a tough kid from the Bronx, tough Irish kid from the Bronx. Also the coach's nephew as well, Patty Dean's nephew is Liam Conlon. Gets off a pretty nice punt. It's fielded at about the 41-yard line. And another quality return. Specials are humming right now for St. Anthony's, and that was one of the things in our conversation with head coach Joe Minucci, he said it was a struggle against Cardinal Hayes in their last game in the Bronx where the specials had to be better. And so far, you had to say, right, kickoff, punt return, they've, they've been pretty good here uh, tonight, early goings of this first quarter. Yeah, already winning in that, in that regard. And, you know, Timmy Longo right there, just uh, you know, further setting the tone in that third portion of the game. So the Friars, excellent field position again. They start on the Fordham Prep 38-yard line. Torres takes the snap. Another handoff. A huge hole. And then a violent collision as Morant had the big run. And that looked like that, that play was sprung open right there by Christian Oliva. He's a senior, three-year starter, right guard, number 70 for St. Anthony's, and just plowed open a nice hole. Darius Morant doing the rest. 
Morant again, and this time he is stopped. We'll take a look at the starting defense for Fordham Prep, presented by Body Armor. Up front, it's Sempervino, Adagoke, Vaughn Johnson. Take a look out for that guy. And Liam Conlon. Your backers are Wood, Rice, Rooney, and Moore. Your corners are Monroe and Padilla, and your safety is English. Second and three for St. Anthony's. Another handoff right up the middle, plowing forward is Morant. So it's been a little bit of thunder lightning here. The first series, it was Ruda, and the second series, it's Darius Morant. Uh, you love to see it. Bo both seniors, both these guys, so unselfish, sharing carries throughout their careers, and both really shining early on tonight. First and goal from the three. Torres has not had to throw a pass yet. And look at one, Conlon in there, making the tackle, pushing Morant back. And Conlon, his brother, was an excellent player as well for these Rams, went on and played at the Naval Academy. That was Matty Conlon. He was an offensive guard at Navy. You know, you, you, know, you, you love those old linemen, Man buddy. Man after my own heart right there. But, yep, great, great play by the 6'3 senior off the edge. That was for a loss of one. Little bootleg, throw to the end zone. Touchdown for St. Anthony's. Alex Mengi with the four-yard reception. And so far, it's really been death by a thousand cuts for Fordham Prep. It's not one guy you want to key into it. Uh, onto with the St. Anthony's attack, but many. Alex Mengi finishes off the drive, and he's been dynamic out of that tight end H back spot all year long. This is Torres' first pass of the game. You see the bootleg rolls out and it finds a wide open Mengi. And that right there shows you the power of establishing the run early in the game. You know, they're expecting the tight end split off the line to block down, initially shows run and just slips off, and that, that's too easy for the St. Anthony's attack. PAT is good. Those fans love what they're seeing early on. Two series, two touchdowns. The Friars have opened up a 14-0 lead. You're watching this Catholic Football League showdown here at Cy Donnelly Field presented by Catholic Health on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see a region that lives feels and pulses with energy but before it all we see you because it's your lives that breathe life into this island at catholic health we're able to provide the highest quality most innovative care for your body because our culture cherishes your humanity long live long island Welcome back to Cy Donnelly Field. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey, also John Perez down on the field. 14-0 Friars early on. Quality kickoff, and this will be fielded at the one. And another short return. So uh, talk about a, a game of special teams right now. It's been St. Anthony's the whole way. Dylan, one thing I love right there, Alex Mangi just had the touchdown, gets down on special teams, helps make the tackle right there. But yeah, he's not he's not back there signing autographs. Absolutely he's getting not. in there. He's getting his nose in the ball. You know, I think if you're if you're Pat Dean right now, you're saying on the sideline, hey guys, you know, we've had our back up against the wall the past couple weeks. We played against some top flight opponents. We've been able to keep it close. Let's settle in. You know, I know there's a ton of people in the crowd, and this is probably the, the brightest lights they played under in a while. But, you know, let's settle down and do what we do here uh, for the Fordham Prep Attack. First and 10 from Fordham's own 10. Talk about being thrown to the wolves here for Jonathan Bailey. There's the handoff. And you get a couple of yards. We're going to send it down to John Perez for a little bit more about Jonathan Bailey's uh, moving up to the varsity. 
guys, as you can see, there's a new signal caller for the Rams. That's Jonathan Bailey. He's only a sophomore. Now, when you think about what Bailey's schedule has been like the past week, it started on Monday when head coach Pat Dean called his father up, Anthony, due to an injury in the Fordham Prep signal caller lineup. That was Matthew Moorhead uh, going down with an injury. So Jonathan Bailey gets the call. He's a bright-eyed sophomore, but his coach, Dean, really believes in him, says that he's got a strong athletic build, but is very cerebral and is not afraid of the bright lights. Says that the one good thing about the Fordham Prep offense throughout all the levels of varsity, JV, and freshman have been that the basic offense has been there. So he feels that Bailey is the guy that could step right in. Guys, let's throw it back up to you. Thanks, John. And that's important, right? When, when you, Pat, when you play the same base offense on the freshman on the JV as, as varsity, you've already got a pretty good uh, base level there for, for Bailey in terms of the playbook. Absolutely. You know, no better incubator to get ready to play varsity football at Fordham Prep than going through the JV. So, you know, he, in theory, should be ready for this. But nothing really gets you ready for the bright lights of varsity quite like just showing up and being thrown, thrown under pressure like he is tonight. There's Bailey just slinging it away. And, uh, yeah, that's the other thing, right? Like your, your first, vers first varsity start is under the lights against the best team in New York State on the road. Um, but, listen, you know, the, these are the moments. And, and, you know, you heard John say it and Pat Dean said it too. Like he's leaning on his seniors, on his captains, take care of him this week, make sure he's all right. He's being treated the right way in the locker room. We're going we're gonna to protect him. Uh, and, so and ho hopefully Jonathan can take comfort in knowing that the strongest steel is forged in the hottest fire. So you know what? No better place to grow up than right here in South Huntington tonight. How about that punt for Conlin? Takes a really nice bounce, and the Rams will field it at the 42-yard line. And uh, you know we said going into this game that. You know, Coach Minucci and St. Anthony's were going to really look to establish the run early on. They've done so only one passing attempt so far for Dante Torres, and I'd expect to see more of the same right here. Look to see them smother them out, smother out the Fordham prep attack by, we'll show, uh, by running the ball. Sorry, Pat. Yeah, we'll show the standings real quick. First for Fordham in AA1, and you see Trinity, we, you just saw them against Kellenberg, you know, uh, certainly the favorite there. Um, but a collection of teams there. Where if you're a Fordham prep, yeah, the wins haven't been there early on, but you've got that confidence considering your schedule that you can play with any of those teams. What a run on first down. Getting to the outside is Ruda. And Frank Ruda, his second touchdown of the game. 58 yards to the house. And hey, what a statement by the senior running back right here just refuses to go down. And, and what I love is you'll see later on in this play, number 17, Nick Matos, the wide receiver. I'll give it just a second, but a key block right here from number 17, Matos. That's so big for your running game to have wide receivers actively engaged in blocking. And there springs an extra 20 yards for the touchdown. PAT attempt is up. And I think it landed somewhere on Wolf Hill Road out there. <coughs> but the start that St. Anthony's wanted here, it's 21 nothing, And you're right, 100%. You know, that, that block up the field. How often do you see running uh, our wide receivers celebrating? You know, like, hands up. No, he had business to take care of. And he did, allowing Rudy to get his touchdown. Absolutely. I think that kind of speaks to the culture that's been created by Coach Minucci here at St. Anthony's. You know, this offensive attack has so many different guys who, you know, are stars in their own right. Could probably go to public schools and get, you know, five, six, seven, uh, you know, targets each game. But instead, a guy like Matos is a senior, you know, has 190 yards on the year, but knows that every time that I'm not touching the ball, I still have a great ability to impact the play. Does so there and deserves a lot of credit for that touchdown. By Ruda. Take a look at the AAA standings. And obviously, St. Anthony's the lone undefeated team in league standings-wise. Off that big win over Iona. They beat Farrell on the road, right? It's been uh, They beat Hayes on the road. It's been really, really difficult to this point for the Friars. But you see, again, that the, those three teams at the top. Kellenberg's got Iona this week. That's... Uh, Going to be difficult for the Firebirds as that kickoff 
Look at that. It's got to be fielded again at the one. And once again, the Friars will have uh, a good position defensively as, again, it's hard enough if you're a sophomore, you're starting from your own 10 again. Yeah, yeah. The, the last thing you want to do is ask your, uh, your young sophomore quarterback to have his back up against the end zone each time he comes out. So far, that's been the positioning for the Rams, something they're going to look to remedy if uh, they hope to save face here tonight. So Fordham, first and 10. From their own 10 again for Jonathan Bailey. And boy, does he look the part of a big time quarterback. Pass incomplete. Got it off pretty good. A little bit low though for Lewis Moore. And we'll take a, another look here at Jonathan Bailey. Again, first varsity start. The freshman high jump champion, part of the number one ranked shuttle hurdle relay team in the state. You see the number 10 there. That's what he wore on the JV level. Obviously, he's coming up here as number nine. The funny thing, too, is he, he's so raw and fresh here in the varsity. Pat Dean, until today, wasn't sure. He's like, he, he's either going to be nine or 10. We're not sure. We'll find <laughs> out. So. Man in motion is Anchetta. They get him the ball. He tries to cut it up field. And that's a lot of what we'll see, I think, from Jericho Anchetta here today. He's that prototypical slot, right, where he's going to get a lot of those reverses, the jet sweeps. He blocks well, does number three for Fordham Prep. He's that guy, Pat, and you love it too out of your receivers that does all the dirty work, right? To, he's the lead blocker for Charlie English. Just uh, gets his nose in there, the senior Jericho Anchetta. Absolutely love that out of Anchetta. You know, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's real strong and he's real quick once he gets into open space. Uh, you know, he's going to look to get some breathing room uh, a little bit better than that last run as, uh, as tonight progresses. Yeah, yeah Rams really just want to move the chains at this point. Third and six from their own 14. Empty backfield as Bailey motions, looks for options, slings it over the middle. He gets his first varsity completion. That was to Tommy Geis, number 15. Captain, possession receiver. And Geis does a really good job here having the awareness to get to the sticks, sits down right there, and is able to haul it in. Uh, and I thought that, I think that was really, really big for yeah. this Fordham prep offense to, you know, just get a first down, get a little bit of a rhythm going, kind of get into what they do as opposed to punting the ball right back to this ferocious St. Anthony's attack. Yeah, and Pat, the thing too about Tommy Geis, when we spoke with uh, Patty Dean, their head coach, he says, you know, in, a, in, in the time that he's been on varsity, he's probably seen about a thousand balls thrown his way, whether it's practice or games. He might have seen one that he's dropped that he should have caught. Geis just has those sure hands, which obviously you want to really have in that possession receiver. First and 10 from the Fordham Prep 20. It's the handoff and a run towards the right. That's the sophomore, Jack McKillop, number 28. He plays for Pat Dean in the spring. He's the baseball leadoff hitter. Tremendous baseball player. Dean says one of the best swings you'll ever see. Gap to gap kind of guy on the on the diamond. And, you know, I said to Pat Dean, I said, you know, you had a pretty good one in Andrew Velasquez uh, a couple years ago. Velasquez obviously played for the Yankees, now part of the Angels system. He says he he's not quite he's not quite Velasquez yet, but uh, he is really, really good and he's only a sophomore. And that's one thing that stands out about this Fordham Prep program. You know, a lot of guys who play multiple sports, got some great wrestlers, some great lacrosse players also on this team. So, you know, a lot of all around, uh, you know, athletes out there from the Bronx. Second and 12. Another pass and nearly picked off by Ian Strong. And you know, Ian Strong had previously been a cornerback, uh, you know, as a junior. This year gets moved down into the box, and he just seems to, you know, find the ball no matter where it is. Made the tackle on the previous play, and then right there, uh, you know, he doesn't drop that interception all too often. Yeah, Strong came into this game with 39 tackles, two for a loss, a sack, an INT. We know he'll play his collegiate football down at the banks of the Raritan out at Rutgers University for Greg Schiano. And that's the type of athlete they got to bring in if they want to turn around their standing in the Big Ten. 
Third and 12 from the 18 yard line. Bailey under center this time. Goes over the middle and that is intercepted. The intended target was Keegan Duty. Looks like Ryan McCloskey on the interception right there. No, it was Dante. Was it Dante Vardaro maybe? Let's, we'll take another look at it. Or Ajani Valerio. There it is, over the middle, 39. Wow, that's impressive right there. Just a junior and steps up in a big way, reads a quarterback's eyes, and uh, tough break for Jonathan Bailey looking to make something happen there on third down. You see it again, Ajani right over the middle, gets a little touch. A lacrosse player, good athlete, his first pick of the year, and the Friars in this final minute of the first quarter are in business again. Another big run on first down. As you're moving the chains, it was Morant pushing himself forward. And, you know, so long as St. Anthony's can get seven, eight yards on the ground at will, it's going to be a very long night for the Rams. Second and two. Bouncing to the outside is Morant. And he does get that first down. And this is the key, I think not just for tonight. I think when, you know, you project forward and obviously the weather is going to start to change. It's going to get harder to throw the football, windy conditions. And, I, and, and that's why I think, Minucci said we really want to get the running backs going and, and really establish a run going forward as well, not just for tonight, but for the rest of the regular season into the playoffs. And, you know, it's instrumental on multiple levels. You know, when, when they're able to run the ball successfully, that also increases their time of possession. Their defense has struggled a little bit at times this year and uh, eases a little bit of the pressure off of them when they're able to get a nice rhythm going on the ground on the offensive side. Morant with the run. But a flag was thrown. There's a good look at our referee, Dan Coletti. It'll be a hold on the offense. First flag of this game. This pushes St. Anthony's back to the 35-yard line. Final 40 seconds here of this first quarter. Morant. Torres finds him, cuts inside. Another flag is thrown, turns, and doesn't have any other opportunities. But the flags, Pat Godfrey, seem to be contagious. We had none, and we quickly get two. <laughs> yeah, back to back right there. You know, get, get behind the chains and even further behind the chains. Yeah, block in the back on St. Anthony's. And, you know, this introduces the first obvious passing scenario of the game for St. Anthony's. They've been really, really successful uh, running the ball at will all night so far. But when you shoot yourself in the foot, sometimes you're going to have to now put it on the shoulders of your great senior quarterback. It's a first and 29. Torres does throw the football. It's complete. Breaking a tackle. Going for the score. Touchdown, St. Anthony's. Nick Matos with the score. Nick Matos with a great job. We just gave him a big shout out for his blocking. All of a sudden he says, I'm going to get mine. And uh, once he breaks that tackle, game over. And just relentless from the St. Anthony's offense so far tonight. Really nothing going for Fordham Prep. And that's the thing. If you're the Rams, you've, that's the tackle you've got to make, right? You can't allow Matos extra yardage. He obviously buries it there. And that's what Pat Dean said too, right? We can't get the big play. We can't give up the big play. And look at it now, right? You've got a 58-yard touchdown run by Ruda and then a 45-yard really uh, yak, right, for, for Matos. The PAT is up, Absolutely. and it is good. Not, not even to mention the special teams contribution uh, from, from Longo and Darius Morant. There's been a lot of big plays early on for the Friars, and uh, they're loving this right now at, at St. Anthony's homecoming. 28 nothing lead. There's some of the student body here. Another huge crowd at Cy Donnelly. And you look at the St. Anthony's schedule. We were here for that week one game against Chaminade, that 35-10 win. 
But then they've been on the road ever since, right? You're at Saint or you're at Rutgers against St. Joe's. You're at Fowler. You're at Iona. You're at Hayes. It's been that long since they've been home. And these people here, you see how packed the stands are. They've been waiting a very long time to see their Friars at home. Absolutely. You know, not just away games, but away games, you know, head, heading into a city, game in the Bronx, game in Staten Island, game in Jersey. They've been far away from home, and uh, you can tell how anxious these fans are to just get a little taste of their top-ranked football team right now. They will be home again next week. They take on Christ the King before that final regular season grudge match up in White Plains against Stepanak. Which would be a fun one. Yeah. The Crusaders coming off their first loss of the year to Iona Prep. Quality return on the kickoff there. That was Benny Lee, number two. But we will take a break as the first quarter has come to an end. What a quarter it was for the Friars. They're out to a 28 nothing lead. You're watching this Catholic Football League Showdown presented by Catholic Health on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Varsity Media covers every sport at every level from every angle. Game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts. That's complete, first down, and more! Touchdown, Oceanside! Photography, live streaming. You name it, well, Toby, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs. Trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back to a packed house here at Cy Donnelly Field in South Huntington where St. Anthony's has opened up a 28 to nothing lead over Fordham Prep. And you know, really not the optimal situation you want to be in right now if you're R.J. Hopwood calling plays for Fordham Prep. Got a sophomore, play, or, uh, you know, sophomore quarterback right now. Just looking to get settled in. Unfortunately, down four touchdowns, so going to probably look to open up their offense a little bit more in this second quarter versus the more conservative play-calling style we saw in the first. Hey, you mentioned Hopwood and uh, Patty Dean, right, the head coach, a Fordham Prep graduate, 1988, was the de defensive coordinator for 18 years. He, all, he said it's, it's hard for him, too. Like, he'll, he'll jump in there with the defensive group a little bit, right? Like, it's been so long since he's been the, the D coordinator that, you know, it's hard not to step in with those defensive guys, but uh, also a baseball coach, the dean of student, teaches two U.S. histories, honors classes. Pat Dean, he is a busy man up on the Rose Hill campus of Fordham University. The prep just a few steps away on the same campus there. First down run. And it was English pushing himself forward. A flag as well on the play. So we'll again have our referee, Dan Coletti. He'll be on sportsmanlike against the fire. We saw a little bit of ripping there, right? Trying to rip the ball out late. And perhaps that's what the official saw there. So um, you get to push forward now if you are Ford and Prep out towards midfield, which you haven't, a, a spot in the field you haven't been to at this point. You know, Dylan, I didn't see a whole lot there, but... You know, sometimes when you're in a situation like this where uh, you got an away team already down four touchdowns, those calls start to go your way as a Fordham prep. Um, but, you know, let's see if they can, uh, you know, capitalize on this opportunity that they've been given. You know, best field position by far all night. They're going to really look to make something of this drive. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. First and 10 from the 48. Bailey, we expect to see a lot of that RPO for him tonight. Again, he hasn't been thrown the entire playbook as a short run forward for the Rams. One of the many guys in there for St. Anthony is his big number 99, Preston Carey. We talked a lot about him before, 6'5", 270 pounds, and he's been an absolute force on the inside for the Friars, one of the, one of the top recruits in his entire class in the country. 
Yeah, you talk Carrie's recruiting. He's got offers already from LSU, Texas A&M, Tennessee, Rutgers, Georgia. There was a kind of a buzz on Long Island, social media-wise, this week when a plane from Alabama was located in the airspace around Long <laughs> Island. Get to that in a second. Hand off another run up the gut. And a solid few yards there for the Rams. So, of course, right away it was like, it must be for Preston. It was, in fact, the president of Alabama for a recruiting of general students, not a football recruiting trip for Alabama. So that was uh, to clear up any of that misconception on social media. Hey, it's all right, though. New York football has come a long way yes. over the last few years, so we're not too far off from Nick Saban chartering a jet and coming up here to South Huntington. Uh, just give Preston a couple years. Only a freshman. <laughs> On the other side of the ball, you got K.J. Duff and Dante Torres. They're scheduled for a trip down to Florida State as well at the end of October. And look out. This play is busted up. It was McKillop, on the it was McKillop with the run. And you see how quickly the defense converged. Yeah, great play right there by Joey Policastro, the senior, 5'10", 220. And, you know, the guy just has a motor that does not stop, has made uh, some, some big plays this year on that St. Anthony's defensive line. Yeah, not, that, not, not the biggest right at that spot, but it's the motor you mentioned, right? He's 5'10", 220, out of that defensive tackle spot. And that's a fourth and eight now for the Rams. And, you know, almost seems kind of like a forced hand. You're down four touchdowns. Ideally, you'd like to punt here, but with the ball at your 50 and the way your defense has played so far, I guess you say kind of what's, what's the difference. Let's go for it. It'll be a timeout for Fordham. And you were mentioning before their assistant coaches, you got R.J. Hopwood, the offensive coordinator. He's a guy playing uh, – uh, doing all the play calling, got Angelo Troiano as well, the offensive line coach. Your defensive coordinator is Mark Mancini. Zach Pisani, a few years removed from playing at Iona Prep. He's your linebacker's coach. Charles Ray, a guy who graduated with Patty Dean, played on their team in 1988. He is your special teams coach, Frank Coley who played at pace with Pat Dean as your D-lines coach, Chris Michaels, your D-backs coach, Al Zawahe, works with the outside linebackers. Want to thank, again, the folks at the Yes Network for their collaboration here to bring even more of an audience to high school football. We are excited to be teaming up with the Yes Network app. This game, as well as many others, are simulcast now on the Yes Network app. Absolutely. I wish I could have known as a kid that someday I'd get to call games on you know, the, the Yes Network app. Really is a dream come true and uh, you know, could be more grateful for, for our partnership there. Yeah, we heard John Perez, you and John Perez, so he's talking about all the center stages, right, that he would watch as well growing up. Fourth down, and we're going to have another flag thrown. We had a fourth and eight. And uh, Bob Coletti, our, our official, really earning it so far tonight, getting, getting active in here. <coughs> it's an encroachment on the defense. So your fourth down, a little bit more manageable now, right, from the 45-yard line, fourth and three. Yeah, and I know those are the types of mistakes that, that drive Coach Joe Minucci absolutely crazy. You call a timeout on the play, you know on the sideline they're telling everybody, watch the ball, watch the ball, don't give them anything easy. And uh, right there makes it a much more fourth and manageable for Ford and Prep. You have trips right for the Rams. Slinging it. First down, that was good looking pass as Bailey found Anchetta for the first down. Yeah, great job by Jericho Anchetta. We've mentioned how he's a real smart guy out there, high IQ player, and just does a good job of sitting down at the sticks, keeping well, drive moving. What that pass must have or must be doing for Bailey's confidence, right? Like you get past those initial nerves, the crowd, the opponent, 
things aren't going your way in the first quarter, but you get a first down conversion there on fourth down, you move the slit, you move the sticks. You know, I think Jonathan Bailey's gonna realize, hey, this is you know, a little bit, little bit faster. The guy's a little bit bigger than what he's used to at the JV level. But you know what? He's a uh, state champion track athlete, 6'2", 180. In terms of you know, physical talent, he's, uh, he's up there with anybody. Now a good-looking run there for Charlie English. A Middlebury commit for football. He's got that great vision. Tough kid as well. He sticks his nose in. He could run between the tackles. His vision is especially evident when he's in traffic. A gain of four on first down for the captain, Charlie English. You know, we mentioned guys contributing in a variety of different factors. Charlie English playing both ways tonight, and it's really like the, you know, the general of their defense out there as well. Bailey under center, another handoff. And there is English breaking a tackle, cutting it to the outside, getting inside the 30-yard line. You know, we mentioned earlier in this drive that 15-yard unsportsmanlike contact uh, or unsportsmanlike penalty against St. Anthony's, giving Fordham Prep new life and great field position and really maximizing it now, having moved the chains a couple times. Seemed to be settling in a little bit from the offensive perspective. One thing to take into consideration on the flip side, St. Anthony's really looking to polish up their defensive performance as they head towards, uh, you know, the playoffs. And uh, good opportunity here to try and clamp down their back up against the wall. Bailey is lunging out to try to make the catch. You see, it was Will Wood, the junior. He's a good-looking athlete as well, right? 6'3", 200. He comes in and slot in certain formations. Big athletic kid who's just getting bigger and stronger every day, especially on the defensive side. You know, Coach Dean also raved about him being a guy who's not afraid to you know, throw his shoulder in there, get involved in, in the blocking game from that wide receiver spot. So certainly a dynamic junior at 6'3", 200, Will Wood. Second and 10 from the St. Anthony's 29-yard line. Another handoff to English, pumps the brakes, cut to the outside, and look at the push as well, right? The big boys up front for the Rams. Listen, this is a rugby school. That was one of those rugby, rugby scrums, right? Pushing forward, getting those extra yards. You'll love it from the big dudes up front. Albi Can Camacho, you got Khalid Adegoke. At left guard, Regan, your two-year starting center as only a junior. Musia and Sempervino on that right side of the line. Yeah, they've really been opening up some things in, in the running game for Charlie English and company on this drive. Uh, and really just love the fight that we're seeing right sure. now from this Fordham Prep team. You know, things didn't start out the way you wanted by any means in the first quarter. But you know what? When you see the pile getting shoved in, in the right direction, if you're a Fordham Prep fan, that gives you a lot of confidence about the way these guys come out here and want to compete. And Pat Dean said it as well. We just want them to know they were in a football game tonight. Like, leave your heads held high when you head back to the Bronx. Third and six from the 25-yard line. Timeout for Fordham. A lot of games here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Here's a look at some of our upcoming games. We stay in the Catholic Football League tomorrow night out at Mitchell Athletic Complex. Zavarian, St. Francis Prep. A good one in the Suffolk Publix. West Hampton and Sayville next Friday night. Also got Port Washington, Syosset as well. Back to the Catholic League. More, a more Catholic team we saw last year, right, in the Double A one championship championship game against St. Francis Prep, New Hyde Park, Garden City, and St. Peter's Christ the King. All those games right here 
on the Varsity Media Sports Network. The one jumping out to me right there is just West Hampton versus Sable as a former League 3 guy yeah, in buddy. Suffolk County. Uh, I know that that's a, a great rivalry and one that might fly a little bit under the radar, but has been incredibly competitive, especially these last five or six years. It jumps out for me as well because it's about a five-minute local ride <laughs> down, down Main uh, Street. Uh, they're a mirror image of one another. The, 100%. The, the two districts, but uh, both, you know, just know how to churn out great football players. You know, people familiar with West Hampton know that, you know, the Hanson Award, Carl Hanson is a uh, West Hampton grad. We got Dylan so, Lowby, right, a couple years Dylan ago, and now he's at New Hampshire. You got Kyle Messina currently one of the best running backs on Long Island, and he's only a sophomore for Sayville. So uh, that should be a lot of fun. Third and six off the timeout. Bailey fakes the handoff, slings it. And that is caught. It'll be short of the first down marker, but you got to give some credit there on the reception. That was not easy for James Rice. It's a nice reception right there. And I think if, if you're Fordham Prep, this is clearly four down territory. We saw him go for it uh, at, at a fourth and eight situation in midfield earlier in this drive. They know that they've got a couple of plays in that third down situation to try and move the sticks and uh, give themselves a more fourth and manageable right here. James Rice as we have fourth and three here under five minutes to go in this second quarter. A sophomore, right? Another young buck for the Rams. Also the starting right fielder in baseball. Pat Dean gave us his entire uh, starting nine, I think, coming up in the spring. Fourth and three now. Bailey back to pass. The pressure comes, slings it. That is complete. It is Geis. Can he push forward? He will be short of the first down marker, so it'll be a turnover on downs. Guys with those sure hands, but you know, knows to come back to the ball. Unfortunately, pushes him back beyond inside the sticks and just short there on fourth down. Big stop for the St. Anthony's defense, and I think that's going to give them a lot of confidence and encouragement knowing they're able to get off the field. They're back up against it a little bit here in the second quarter. So the Friars back on the field. Obviously, you wanted to punch it in, right? If you are Fordham Prep, but at least you now give St. Anthony's a long field to play with, right, for these final four and a half minutes of the first half. Absolutely. You know, for Fordham Prep right here, it's going to kind of come down to tackling. Torres over the middle. That's complete. There is a broken tackle. And finally, pull down another big run. This time it was Timmy Longo. And there is a flag as well on the play. So hold the phone. Let's see if we're moving back. I think we are. So they will go back as... The infraction was against the Friars. And really, you know, we've seen the last couple drives. St. Anthony, Anthony's comes out in the first quarter, four straight drives, looks unstoppable. And, you know, since then has really shot themselves in the foot, can't get out of their own way. And if they want to keep layering on to this lead going into halftime, they're going to have to clean up some of these sloppy mistakes um, that are, quite frankly, one of the only reasons it's not 42 to nothing right now. So an ineligible man downfield. Torres hands off. The cut inside. And a good run there on first down. That looked to be number 46, Tyler Malik. The junior running back, 5'7", 160 from Seaford. Yeah, so might as well... Get Malik involved as well. We already saw what Ruta and Morant will bring. Second and six. And it almost kind of feels early on like you're going running back by committee based on the series. Another hand, no, fake handoff this time. Torres, he faked me out. Oh, look at this burst right from midfield. Good night. Timmy Longo, touchdown St. Anthony's. And he just won't be denied. Somebody get him a Gatorade because he did a lot of cardio on that drive right there. You know, almost breaks for the touchdown, but gets it called back uh, with the flag on the initial big catch. And then right there, he just says, hey, ball never lies. Timmy Longo goes 75 yards. 
And we'll stay on brand. How about a body armor for Timmy Longo? Of course, of course. Now, if he wants to stay truly hydrated, body armor is the only option. <laughs> Longo came into this game. He's almost a forgotten guy, right, uh, on these incredible wealth of receivers. Hadn't had a touchdown until that one. He had 10 receptions for 172. But he's that guy, as the point after attempt is up and good. You watch St. Anthony's on film, whatever game it is, there's always going to be that big Timmy Longo catch. Yeah, Tim, Timmy Longo through the years uh, always seems to sneak up on you. You're, you're trying to worry about, you know, in years past, K.J. Duff, Kenyon Miles, Ian Strong, so many of these different guys who can make plays, Morant, and then Timmy Longo right there out of the slot says, hey, you forgot about me? I got breakaway speed too. And, and wow, you know, just what a compliment to this offense for St. Anthony's. A great route runner, great hands, reliable. 5'9", 185. I like the burst here as well, right? Watch here. He just flies right by a pair of defenders for Fordham Prep. And then all that's left to do is get in that end zone and hand the ball off to the official. One thing you do love to see, you know, some of these guys, seniors, this is only their second home game of the year, homecoming, and uh, really putting on a big show so far tonight. The yeah, I guarantee Timmy Longo will remember that catch the rest of his life. So 35 nothing is your score. There is the kickoff. It's fielded at about the 11-yard line. Looks like Benny Lee right there. Yep. And, you know, we mentioned the horrible field position for Fordham Prep to start off the game. Their first few drives is pass drive, able to get some success with better field position and uh, slowly starting to turn things around on the special team side coming out just short of the 30. Yeah, Benny Lee for Fordham. Pat, Fordham Prep is an incredible rugby school, always ranked among the top in the nation. Their arch rival, Xavier, right there with them as well. And Benny Lee might be the best rugby player at Fordham. And listen, when you could play rugby with that physicality, th this is almost like getting on the golf course. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. We, we, you actually have pads now. We've been talking about intra-sport transfer, but I don't think there's any skill set more transferable to the gridiron than being able to play rugby. You know, B Benny Lee really knows how to use leverage, play low to the ground. He bounces off a lot of tacklers. Um, and, you know, at 5'7", 170, you know, he packs a punch uh, in, in a smaller size. So, yeah, really a, a stud at the running back position for Fordham. Bailey has alternated between under center and shotgun. In shotgun now as he rolls right. He's got English as a blocker. Slings it downfield. Another good-looking pass by Bailey. And that'll move the chains again as the reception was made by, I think that was Archetta. It was, number three. And, you know, we, we've called Archetta's name quite a few times tonight. The senior stepping up under the bright lights and being a nice comfort blanket for a sophomore QB. So first and 10 from the 45 yard line for Fordham Prep. And that receiving core, Pat Dean said, of, of all the strengths of this year's team as English is now in motion, rolls out to the left, downfield as Bailey took a hit. That's an incomplete pass and a flag is thrown as well. But Pat Pat Dean said of his team, he, he likes the offensive line, the defense finally rallying in the form, but it's that group of receivers that he says is probably the overall strength of this team. Pass interference against the Friars. You know, part of that right there is, is the impact of this dynamic uh, receiving crew for the Fordham Prep Rams. Uh, you know, number 24 looks like uh, Joe McKenna shows up just a little bit early, looking to break that play up. And uh, the ref's quick with the whistle so far on this one. Yeah, your receivers, you've got Moore and Duty on the outside. By the way, Duty, a baseball pitcher. 
Patine had to make sure he told us that. Recurring theme. As well. Geis and Anchetta, your slot receivers. Those are your starters, but multiple of the guys as well. Charlie English can catch the ball out of the backfield. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. As Bailey rolls out, and that one was in and out of the hands of the intended target as Lewis Moore was now unable to hold on. And Ian Moore. Strong jumps under, underneath this ball. He was yeah. looking to bring it back for, for seven, just, just a step too late. Moore and Oberlin Lacks commit. Second and 10 from the 4108 left in this dominant first half for the Friars of St. Anthony's. And you know St. Anthony's would love to go into the half with that donut still on the board for the Rams. We'll see if Jonathan Bailey has anything to say about that. Bailey goes to his own sideline, and that's probably the first ball that we've seen this game overthrown. It was Geis, the intended receiver, but kind of having to go cross field right into the lights. That one uh, had a little bit extra mustard on it. You know, sometimes that can just be a, uh, a function of being a little jittery out there, feel that rush coming on, and ball sails on him just a little bit there. So third and 10 from the 40-yard line for the Rams of Fordham Prep. They open the season with back-to-back -back wins over Mount St. Michael and Holy Cross. And since it's been four consecutive losses to Kellenberg, more Catholic, Holy Trinity and Chaminade. You know, Dylan, we hate to talk about moral victories, but I think if right now Fordham Prep could get some points on this drive, that'd be a great feeling going into halftime. That's another good-looking pass and another completion to Lewis Moore. Yeah, Lewis Moore doesn't drop many, and uh, you know, yet another example of this really smart, experienced receiving core for Fordham Prep, knowing exactly where the sticks are and getting there. Well-delivered ball by Bailey. Yeah, Moore's a guy who can stretch the field. He's got great speed, great hands. And also, you love to see one of your outside receivers not afraid to run those inside routes either. First and 10 from the 30-yard line inside the final minute. Bailey bobbled it for a moment, looks for English. He bobbled it for a moment, and he still makes the catch. And don't look now, but all of a sudden, Fordham Prep has a little bit of momentum going on the offensive side of the ball, stringing together a few completions here. And uh, in prime striking distance with just 20 seconds left to go in this first half. English, in addition to all those attributes we mentioned about him running the game and his vision, he's also that extra coach on the field. He'll go to the sideline, tell the coach staff what he's seeing, what he's not seeing as well. Does the same from the safety spot defensively as well. And that, that can be really invaluable, especially in some of these more difficult, uh, you know, hostile type environments, having that senior that you can, can rely on, know that he's gonna be one of the smartest guys out on the field anytime he's playing. First and 10 from the 21 yard line. Bailey this time rolls left, has plenty of time. He'll go end zone and he goes through the back of the end zone. Incomplete. And looked like Joe McKenna right there. Might have collided with that back fence. Good to see that he's okay. Having some fun out there. Yeah, McKenna's trying his best to get that INT, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, he knows he's got the St. Anthony student section, so all of his buddies wanted to see a nice catch right there. Second and 10 from the 21-yard line. 12 seconds remaining in this first half. One thing to take into account, you know, uh, Winston Odo, the kicker for Fordham Prep, has a leg uh, that's good from 50-plus. He's hit from 46 this year, so this could be a potential field goal situation right now for Fordham Prep with just six seconds left on the clock. Geis, the intended receiver, that was incomplete as well, and perhaps this will set it up <clears throat> as the Rams will take a timeout. Maybe they set it up here for their 
possible kick here. It'll be about a 38-yarder, so well within the, the range of Winston Odo, the junior for Fordham Prep. As I mentioned, he hit a 46-yarder earlier in the year. He's 10 for 14 on point after attempts and is a soccer guy, you know, so has ample leg to hit it here. We'll see if Fordham Prep able to kind of flip the tail of the script in the special teams battle at least on this last play of the first half. Third and, or fourth down here and Odo, as you mentioned, a 46-yarder this season. And this attempt will be a 38-yarder. McKillop is your holder. High snap, and that one's blocked. Ian Strong got the piece of it. Another thing to add to Ian Strong's arsenal this year. You know, what, what can't this guy do? A couple of St. Anthony's players are looking for that scoop and score opportunity, pass over it, but that's okay. I'm sure Coach Minucci will be plenty happy going into halftime with this 35 to nothing lead. Absolutely dominant performance by the Friars here at their homecoming in South Huntington. Yeah, a lot of big plays. And we'll send it down now to John Perez, who's got Joe Minucci on the field. Guys are individual TD scorers, so four different guys scoring TDs. What does it say about the depth of this team? Yeah, you know, listen, we got guys that can play. It's exciting, and you know, just happy they can come out here. Finally, we haven't been home in, in, in such a long time, playing in front of their home fans and their peers uh, on homecoming, and have uh, and have some fun out here. And what do you thought of the atmosphere so far? Listen, best Friday night atmosphere in New York, no questions asked. So uh, it's, it's it's fun. You can feel the buzz, and uh, you know, happy we're uh, we're home and just you know doing our thing with the guys out here. All right, thanks, Coach. My pleasure. You got it. Joe Minucci, he's going to the locker room. Guys, we'll send it back up to you. Well, I'm not going to argue with him about the best atmosphere in New York. We said Long Island, but let's get past that to all of New York. Absolutely. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. So halftime here at Cy Donnelly Field, and the Friars have a commanding 35 nothing lead over Fordham Prep. You're watching this Catholic Football League game presented by Catholic Health right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts, a clash of styles, out in Satake, we love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to VarsityMediaPass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see a region that lives feels and pulses with energy but before it all we see you because it's your lives that breathe life into this island at catholic health we're able to provide the highest quality most innovative care for your body because our culture cherishes your humanity long live long island varsity media covers every sport at every level from every angle game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts. That's complete, first down and more, touchdown Oceanside. Photography, live streaming, you name it, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs, trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403. 2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net one more time come on one more one more one more one more right it stands yeah. Two, one. one more man 
Oh man. Alright, look, bro. Want more? If you're an event organizer looking for a media company to cover live streaming, action photography, and game video for your event, look no further. Varsity Media travels throughout the Northeast covering weekend tournaments, showcases, and championships. Contact us today to learn about our services and packages at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. One more time. One more. One more. Right it stands. Yeah! Two. One. One more, man. Oh, man. All right, little bro. Want more? High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts, a clash of styles, out to talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week player interviews, and so much more. Head to VarsityMediaPass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. On the field, it is halftime here, and the Friars with a 35-0 lead over Fordham Prep. It was as good a start as you would want in a high school football game for the Friars. Ruda had a five-yard touchdown in the first possession. Torres then found Mengi for a touchdown. Ruda ran for 58 yards. And then Nick Matos did this for the Friars. Uh, a tremendous first half as Dante Torres finds Matos, gets into space, breaks a couple of tackles. And he'll get in for the 45-yard touchdown run. That extended St. Anthony's lead to 28-0. And Pat Dean, the Fordham Prep coach, said, we've got to avoid giving up the big plays. They certainly did not do that. Three touchdowns of 40 or more yards, including this one, where Dante Torres goes to Timmy Longo, and Longo goes to the house. 75 yards for the score, his first touchdown of the year. That gives the Friars the 35-0 lead. Let's take a look at some of those first half stats. And the total yards, uh, nearly 300 in that first half for the Friars, 85 for Fordham Prep. They did move the football. They did have more of the possession. As you see there, more than triple the possession for Fordham Prep. First downs are pretty even. More kickoff returns, obviously, because they are getting more of the football there. But uh, it is that score on top that tells the most poignant part of the story with St. Anthony's leading 35 to nothing. We'll take a break. We'll return 
for the start of the second half. You're watching this Catholic Football League showdown presented by Catholic Health on the Varsity Media Sports Network. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts, a clash of styles, out to talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see a region that lives, feels, and pulses with energy. But before it all, we see you, because it's your lives that breathe life into this island. At Catholic Health, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body, because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. Varsity Media covers every sport at every level from every angle. Game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts. That's complete, first down and more. Touchdown, Oceanside. Photography, live streaming. You name it, well, Toby, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs. Trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. One more time. Come on, one more, one more. One more. One more. Right it stands. Yeah. Two. One. One more, man. Oh, man. All right, little bro. Want more? If you're an event organizer looking for a media company to cover live streaming, action photography, and game video for your event, look no further. Varsity Media travels throughout the Northeast covering weekend tournaments, showcases, and championships. Contact us today to learn about our services and packages at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. One more time. Come on, one more, one more. One more? One more. Right it stands. Yeah! Two, one. One more, man. Oh, man. All right, little bro. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts, 
A clash of styles. Out to talk it. We love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week. Player interviews and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. We welcome you back. It is halftime. It is homecoming here at Cy Donnelly Field and this large crowd in South Huntington loving what they're seeing to this point. 35 nothing. the lead for the host Friars. We'll take a look at uh, some more first half stats. We'll, we'll revisit some of our players to watch, right? Kind of see how they're doing right now. We'll first look at the Visitors from Fordham Prep, obviously on the scoreboard, uh, not going great. But Charlie English, number 22, he's got 11 carries for 45 yards and seven touchdowns. You look at defensive numbers, uh, English also leading the way with three. Josiah Moore, uh, he is struggling a little bit. He has one tackle uh, on the game to this point for the Rams. And their QB, Jonathan Bailey. Listen, pretty good, Pat, I would say. Look, 7 of 17, 46 yards. He did throw an INT. Um, but again, you know, like what are you really expecting of a guy in his first varsity start in St. Anthony's? I think those are respectable numbers for the sophomore QB. Absolutely. You know, considering the circumstances, uh, tall order for Jonathan Bailey coming in here to the number one team in the state, number one environment in the state most likely, uh, and, and trying to pull away successful but doing a doing an admirable job so far we've seen him be really efficient especially when trying to target the chains get the ball to the sticks and keep keep drives alive um and we'll see if fordham prep can build off of some of that offensive momentum they're able to gain on that last drive of the first half if you remember that came down almost hit the field goal but instead ian strong comes in blocks it to retain the shutout for the friars fordham prep gonna look to build off of some of those positive plays that they had to close out the first half. We'll revisit our players to watch for St. Anthony's now. It was Darius Morant, and he was part of a really great uh, two-headed monster, especially at running back. Morant, seven carries, 50, 50, 55 yards, but it was Frank Ruda, the other part of that Thunder Lightning, with five carries for 99 yards and two touchdowns. And you see defensively, Di Chiaro, their middle linebacker, He's got three tackles, including one for a four-yard loss. So he's been involved, certainly uh, making things difficult for the Fordham Prep offense. And how about Dante Torres? The numbers for the QB, that's on this season, right, which right away is, again, remarkable when you consider it's only been, what, five games. And those, that's, like a, that's like a really, really good season for a lot of QBs. How about tonight, though? Three of three for 125 yards, all three of his completions – for touchdowns. Yeah, you know, it, it's almost like he feels like he's uh, on an extended tryout. He's committed to Fordham <laughs> right now. So looking to, uh, you know, make a real imprint on what he plans to do when he gets up to the Bronx. But absolutely, I mean, you can't beat the efficiency. 100% completion percentage, three touchdowns on three <laughs> passing attempts for 125 yards. Uh, maybe the best stat line I've ever seen through a first half for a quarterback. Uh, and I'm sure Coach Minucci is glad to say that his started quarterback has only had to throw the ball three times to create this five-touchdown lead. Yeah, Tim Longo had that one reception, that 76-yard touchdown we showed you before. Nick Matos went 45 yards to the house, and Alex Mengi with that four-yard touchdown as well. And you mentioned Dante, and uh, he's a verbal commit to Fordham University. I think it's going to be really interesting here down the second half of this season. You know, there's, there's, there's some interest perhaps as well. You know, we know he's going to go down to Florida State. Uh, for a visit there along with KJ Duff. They're going to check out a game in late October. You know, there's been some, there's been some talk. We've seen what he can do. Like, he can play at a higher level. Yeah, absolutely. You know, from the first time that I saw Dante Torres when he was a junior last year, I've been saying that, that guy, I think, could play Power 5 football. I really think that that is his kind of ceiling. He's playing at one of those elite schools, a Florida State, a Clemson. Uh, you know, I love my ACC schools, of course. <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
Certainly Fordham is a great destination yeah. for anybody who could make it there. Uh, great FCS school, very competitive in the Patriot League and top-tier academics coupled with that. I'd say they, they, sling, it, the they sling it as well, man. Like right now, they're throwing, they putting a lot of big numbers. It's uh, St. Anthony's-esque on the offensive side for, for the Rams of Fordham University. So not, not, not a bad destination for a guy who, who we see on the high school level who can throw it. Uh, Pat, want to uh, show a couple fun things here. Uh, new feature here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We want to get to know some of our athletes, right? So here's a little bit of getting to know Tommy Geis out of Rye. You see his numbers on the year, 11 carries, 157. We asked him his mom's favorite dish. How about a little homemade grilled pizza? Ooh, that, sounds, that sounds good, all right? All right, Miss Geis. I'm impressed. He goes old school with his game day playlist, a little rock the Casbah by the Clash. <laughs> I love that. Favorite athlete as well, Antonio Callaway. Getting to know Tommy Geis, number 15, in your Fordham Prep Rams scoreboard. And while we're doing our look, how about we take a look and getting to know a little bit of Thomas Mackle for St. Anthony's. There's the big boy, the end from Huntington. I see his numbers on the year, 30 tackles, three for a loss, three sacks. How to ask him his favorite pizzeria and slice, right? That's an important thing to mention, right? You can't just say pizzeria. Of course, of What's course. your go-to slice? And for Mackle, it's, it's, you know, you can't beat this, really. It's Little Vincent's and Huntington, the cold cheese uh, slice. You know, this really just warms my heart. I myself <laughs> am a Huntington native. And for anybody who has not been to Little Vincent's after midnight, because it really tastes different once you get into the AM, <laughs> I will tell you that is the best slice of pizza that you can get your mouth on uh, after you've had, you know, maybe a few adult beverages for our older viewers or a few soda pops for our younger ones. Yeah, Thomas Mackel, I don't know if his curfew, but we suspect he's He's probably he's, going a little earlier yeah, than yeah, I go. Yeah. Maybe and, about uh, 8, 9 o'clock. I don't want Thomas seeing me when I'm walking into <laughs> Little Vincent's. Uh, favorite TV show? I love this as well. Uh, he's a Breaking Bad guy, Woo! right? You go a little Breaking Bad, probably second of, or 1A for him, right, is, is, is Better Call Saul. So uh, love that as well. The new Madden game as well. That's big for, for Mackle when he's not on the field here for the Friars. There he is, number 15. And he, he's a big boy, does a really good job setting the edge for that St. Anthony's attack. Having himself a, a good night, as is the entire St. Anthony's roster so far. Yeah, you got to think this is an important game for their defense, right? Because, you know, as uh, it, it's, it's been pretty clear to this point for St. Anthony's, their offense has been, you'd have to say, light years ahead of their defense this year. The way that they're humming... And, and scoring so many points, the defense has been giving up a lot of points as well. So uh, this is an important one as well, especially when you consider, you know, going forward, it's Christ the King, and then it's Stepanak to end the regular season, and then obviously the money part of your season in the, in the playoffs. Yeah, the, these boys got to get ready on the defensive side of the ball, would like to kind of maintain uh, the performance that they had in the first half. And then another thing to, you know, just kind of keep an eye on is, uh, you know, Joe Minucci as he works quality depth into this game, you know, opportunities, uh, are, you know, come, don't come very often to work in those guys, second stringers, third string guys, who you might need to call upon uh, when an injury jumps out of nowhere in the playoffs or in a step and act game. Really great opportunity to work some of the younger guys in, give them a chance for St. Anthony's to prove what they can do. One of the guys who's having a really good year defensively, especially of late, is Dante Vidaro. For more on him, let's send it down to the field to our John Perez. Well, guys, it's been quite a couple of weeks for the leading tackler in this one, Dante Fidaro. He ended the last two games in victories for the Friars with sacks. You see he's leading the way now with six tackles. He's tied for the most for St. Anthony's. And that's a guy that is going to play lacrosse at UPenn. And it just goes to show the depth in this athletic department as a whole. You've got big-time football players that are going to play lacrosse and vice versa. Having said that, though, Fidaro has been putting on a show his last three weeks. What an asset to have for St. Anthony's. Yeah, Dante, thanks, John. Vidaro, incredible when you think about it too, right? You, you go back a couple of weeks, that Iona prep game, where it felt like whoever had the ball last was winning that game. It was a Johnny Shepard, who we know is a baller, right? And it was Dante Vidaro, that last sack to end that game, to give St. Anthony's the road win at Marafield. That was huge. And then he does it again on the rooftop, 
right? Chasing down Belin and, and making the tackle there as well. Two sacks for Vidaro. We know he's going to U-Pen to play lacrosse, but that's one of those guys you're speaking about, right? Like, we know the named guys, right? Mackle, we just showed you as well. Ian Strong as well. You've got a terrific corner in Jaden Platt. But Dante Vidaro, we expect uh, a lot of this last part of the season, he's going to have a big uh, a say in it. Absolutely. You know, he's come of age very quickly. He's only a junior, so he's got uh, a lot of time ahead of him in a Friars uniform. But, you know, really the way he's shown that he can play the linebacker position, uh, I wouldn't be shocked to hear that Coach Priori from UPenn uh, with the football department is also looking at him uh, by the end of the year. That kickoff went out of bounds, so Fordham Prep will get their first offense possession started from the 35-yard line, and in our conversation with Pat Dean, the Rams head coach, he said, listen, you know, the, our kids are going to be ready Friday night. We know we're the underdogs. We know that it's homecoming, but no one, you know, no one's naive to this, but we're going to go in there and let the chips fall where they may. He said Hayes played them hard last week. Chaminade beat Hayes. We almost beat Chaminade, you know, kind of playing that game a little bit. Um, those are the kind of things that you, you put in perspective to the kids leading into a game like this. And we're seeing now, you know, certainly some pit, pitfalls to that transitive uh, property, looking at it through that lens. But you know what? I think there's a lot for them to go out there and fight for in this second half. And, uh, you know, they said it was their goal to, to leave with their head held high and head back to the Bronx. I think there's still an opportunity to do so. English pushes forward. He gets out to the 40-yard line. It's like a gain of five there on first down for Charlie English. And, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, uh, you, you play to win every game, right, clearly, but also a lot of times, especially when you consider the deficit they're in, you're also playing for your future. And this is a fantastic game. you, you got to say a litmus test for Fordham Prep because of the ability, the speed. You're not going to see this probably in any other double-A team, certainly as you, as you get to your postseason, yeah. as it's now McKilla pushing forward. The only thing comparable they'll have to worry about is you know, the team right down the road in Holy Trinity, who has a big chip on their shoulders, thinks they might be able to compete this year amongst those giants we talked about in the triple-A division. But no, you know, certainly I think there's a lot of parity in double-A one this year. Fordham Prep knows that you know, they've had to you know, cut their teeth a little bit up against some of these really you know, challenging, strong AAA programs, but uh, a lot of reasons to, to have confidence going into the, the back end of your schedule as they go back down to their own level. What probably is going to be great for Fordham, you know, you've got Matt Moorhead. He's your starting QB, right, the junior. He's been out for three weeks, or he's going to be out for three weeks. He's got an MRI. He hurt his wrist against Chaminade as Bailey under center hands off, and McKillop will get the first down. Good-looking run there for the sophomore. But what's important, Pat, is you get St. Peter's next week, right? Certainly a game you, you expect to be in, a winnable game. Then you get a bye in week eight. So you can get McKillop back, or excuse me, you can get more head back for that first-round playoff game. Absolutely, you know, and uh, as we've said, they played really tight against a lot of the, the cream of the crop. Uh, throughout the Catholic League this year, just coming off a really tight loss against Chaminade, who's viewed as one of those uh, you know top teams, uh, you know or, or you know solid team in AAA. So I think you know a lot of reasons to to keep your head held high and be optimistic looking into the playoffs for Fordham Prep. First and ten from the 50-yard line, Bailey back to pass, dumps one over the middle. That is complete and a big gain here. Another first down and more as Tommy Geis gets in to the secondary for the first really big play of the game for the Rams. And, you know, Coach Dean said going into this game that Tommy Geist will nickel and dime you. So we've seen him pick up some of these shorter little routes right here. Breaks underneath, and all of a sudden he's off to the races. A missed tackle or two, and that's a big pickup for the senior. Yeah, Geis probably the smartest on the field for Fordham. He finds his spots in the zones. He's also the long snapper, the PAT snapper. He's the backup quarterback. Does a little bit of everything for this Rams team. Look at that hole for English. And he pushes forward. Nice looking run by Charlie English. 
And don't look now, but, you know, Fordham Prep gaining a little bit of momentum on the offensive side of the ball. This is back-to-back -back drives where they've been able to move it consistently against the St. Anthony's defensive front. And uh, some wide holes to run behind right there for, uh, for Charlie English. He's, you see some different personnel there for the Friars as well defensively. It's a first and goal from the 10-yard line. Bailey hands off. And a touchdown for Charlie English. 10-yard score to put the Rams on the scoreboard. One different wrinkle that was introduced into this uh, Fordham Prep at offensive attack to start off the, the second half is James Rice, the, their middle linebacker, number 44, coming in and doing a really good job at fullback. You'll see he kind of leads the way here and gives English the ability to bounce that one, score the touchdown. And uh, kind of crazy because as futile as the Fordham, off or Fordham offense was in the first half, uh, you know, clockwork to start off the second half. For the Rams. Really solid drive. Geis with a big reception. English with a couple big carries as well. And the point after attempt is up. And it is good. So 35-7 is your score now. And that's got to that's be big for those boys in the Bronx, right? Long, long uh, bus ride from Rose Hill campus. Probably made even longer by a Yankee game as well uh, up the, in the Bronx. So uh, you see there Pat Dean giving Rice a little bit of love there on the sideline and uh, a big touchdown for the Rams just for their psyche here coming to Cy Donnelly Field and getting on the scoreboard. Absolutely, and I don't know if he'd admit it, but you know, it, it had to feel good for Charlie English to score that touchdown right in front of the student section at St. <laughs> Anthony's and quiet them, you know, if only temporarily, here at their homecoming. A yeah, big crowd here, a fantastic halftime ceremony. There you see some of the fans... In attendance, I, get, I think, again, not a empty seat, right? You don't see any spot in the bleachers. A blackout here again at St. Anthony's. We were here for that week one game against Chaminade. The stands were absolutely jammed for that one as well. And That, that was more the, uh, the Penn State style. They had the whiteout yeah. week one, and it looks like they're going opposite their team. The team wearing white today. And looks to be a blackout amongst the student section. But no, you know, really just unmatched across New York State, this uh, St. Anthony's student section. A nice kick there by Winston touchback. Odo, his third touchback of the season. And let's see what St. Anthony's looks like offensively here for their first possession of the second half. You talk about their season to this point. We mentioned that Chaminade game, a 35-10 win. And that absolute shootout out at Rutgers, 63-49, to 49, that uh, defeat to St. Joe's. And then you bounce back, you go to the Lions' den, you beat Farrell 35-23, and then the biggest win to date, that 48-42 win up in New Rochelle against Iona. And then you go to the rooftop with that 35-29 win over Cardinal Hayes. Looks to be a new QB in here. For St. Anthony's, looks to be number 10, Joe McGovern. And McGovern's first pass, bounces around, deflects away. And actually, it's Brady Nash. We had him at number four in our program, but you see there wearing number 10. So the sophomore gets an opportunity. And he was a guy who impressed as well in the preseason. And, you know, it's an interesting spot, too, and, and we'll get to more of that. There you see the sophomore Nash. And it's, a, it's an interesting situation, right, for, for St. Anthony's because you've got a younger guy, right? So one school of thought is do you let him get a lot of minutes on the JV, his first pass to the flats and a couple yards gain there, you know, or do you have him learn under a Dante Torres, right, and – Clearly, the decision was made at the start of the season. It was important to have him up. And, you know, there was that competition for the backup all throughout preseason, and Nash was the guy who won it as well. And, you know, it's a, it's a complicated offense here at St. Anthony's, and Nash has done a really good job of understanding his pre-snap reads, where to go with the ball, when the ball is snapped as well. Flag on the play. 
you know, Brady Nash, really good opportunity for him as just a sophomore to get in here under the bright lights at homecoming and get some real quality game reps. Uh, though it looks like an unsportsmanlike on St. Anthony, so it's going to push him even further behind the chains. He's a different looking quarterback, right? Obviously, I mean, look, I mean, Dante's a senior, right? But uh, 5'10", 150 is Brady Nash. Not obviously quite the athlete as Dante is, you know. But listen, you know, he might be that future, right? This is a great opportunity to get some live snaps during the year as, you know, Torres can go to the sideline. And, you know, don't, don't think that Coach Minucci is going to want his offense to take any pressure off of this Fordham defense. Brady Nash expected to come in there and hold up that Friar standard that he's been taught by Dante Torres. Flag on the play. <coughs> Friar's little miscommunication there, struggling to get the numbers on, so ended up being a delay a game against St. Anthony's. Yeah, it's a bit of a challenge of working a lot of guys into a game like this. Uh, you know, things can sometimes get a little sloppy. And you know, with the way that Fordham Prep came out to start the, the you know start the second half, it's certainly a situation where you know St. Anthony's needs to keep their focus throughout the second half. McKillop fielded that return of the Lambros punt at the 40. Only gets a couple yards there as the Rams go back on offense. And it's funny we said at the beginning, right, where. You get the top three in the Catholic AAA, right? At St. At St. Anthony's, Stepanak, and Iona Prep. And then there's a little bit of a drop, and then there's a lot of parity. You know, I mean, you, you might argue, some certainly will on social media, that maybe Holy Trinity could be that team, right, as maybe that fourth best if you add the AAA and AA together, uh, considering they just beat Kellenberg, a game that we had on the Varsity Media Sports Network. But you go... You could put Trinity in the mix. You could put Kellenberg, Chaminade, Farrell, uh, a lot of really good teams. This team as well, among them, good-looking run there by Charlie English, gets outside, right, by our cameraman, Ron Pierre. And that's what the Rams are hanging their hat on, right? Like, we might not be the top three, and we did lose convincingly to a Holy Trinity, but after that, it's it's – it's pretty wide open. Throw more Catholic in there as well, right? There's a, there's a lot of parity from like four in the AAA down to probably six in the AA. Absolutely. You know, and a lot of those programs in that mix feel like they're building towards something special. You know, for, for uh, a long time, St. Anthony was, was down. Uh, it's only the last couple of years that they've kind of returned to true form, what we're used to seeing from the St. Anthony's program. And, uh, you know, some of, the, some of those schools that are a little bit down right now in the AAA division uh, certainly – showing signs of building back to prominence. So I think, you know, in terms of top-to-bottom talent, you've really never seen a better Catholic league than what we have right now. And we'll set up certainly for a really interesting postseason, not just in the AAA, but in AA1 and in AA2 as well. And we will have all of those championship games again on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Certainly super excited to bring those to you it was a really fun and a long Saturday <laughs> morning into afternoon into evening last year at Mitchell Athletic Complex. We expect uh, it to be as good this year. English, that's going to be brought back. It's going to be a block in the back. There's another quality run. And it will be a block in the back called against Lewis Moore, the senior receiver for Fordham Prep. Absolutely. No. You know, Dylan, if I'm ever going to do 10 hours of football, I want to do it on championship Saturday <laughs> in the Catholic League with you right next to me. Can't wait for everybody to join us, uh, you know, in late November because that's always a lot of fun. But, you know, St. Anthony's a team that really feels like they should be there after narrowly missing out last season. Yeah, super hard certainly to project – Right, with the Catholic. And again, we expect it kind of to come down to the wire of the regular season. You know, you had St. Anthony's beating Iona. You had Iona beating Stepanak. And then it's going to come down to St. Anthony's Stepanak 
on the last day of the regular season to really kind of determine those top three seeds as long as everybody else does their job. There's an out to Geis, gets inside the 40. There you see it. And, you know, St. Anthony's obviously last year lost a heartbreaker, Tyona Prep. Uh, on the precipice of making another AAA championship. So this year kind of feels like they exercise those demons, get the monkey off the back with a huge road win over number one ranked in the state at the time, Iona Prep. Question remains to be answered, though. Can they take care of business up in White Plains to finish off the year? And, uh, you know, potentially might have to beat Iona for a second time, which is an even more daunting task. So Yeah, that's the problem, I think, for saying, again, you know, we are projecting – a couple of weeks down the line, and that's hard to do in this Catholic football league. Third and nine for Fordham Prep as Bailey is back to pass. Look out, throws, and that is incomplete. So, again, it, it's kind of, you know, it's projecting, it's looking forward, but, yeah, 100%, right? Like we said at the top, if you're a St. Anthony's, you know, and you do what you're supposed to do and we expect – and Iona and a Stepanak to do the same. It comes down to the eighth week of the regular season. And if you're St. Anthony's, you win that game at Stepanak, you would be the top seed. And man, would you have earned it to having to go up to Iona and having to go up to Stepanak and win both of those games in the road. Now, the problem is if you don't and you fall short to Stepanak, you could be facing the possibility now of being the three seed which will, yes, probably send you up to Iona again for another semifinal game. Again, if everything holds true and, and it's chalk the whole way. You know, when the Friars brought together this great group of seniors, they, they knew that this was a, a golden opportunity for them to do something truly special, bring a title back to South Huntington for the first time in a while. Um, and don't think that this St. Anthony's team is going to be satisfied with anything less than a Triple A championship this year. Bailey's attempt was incomplete. Shane Luckow there at the pass deflection, so it's a turnover on down. St. Anthony's will have the ball. But you're right. I mean, it, when you, we saw it last year, right, like a, a few times, and what was the, the, the big thing for, the, for that large junior class, right? They just couldn't finish those games. They were... Leading big here against Iona. They were leading big here against Stepanak. And they just couldn't close things out. And, you know, even a concern earlier this year against St. Joe's, the rumble on the Raritan up at Rutgers, uh, they took a lead at the halftime and a game that a lot of people thought they wouldn't be able to hang in but wind up giving up 63 points and falling. So, you know, they exercised that demon at Iona Prep, able to finish with a really, really tight one where Johnny Shepard got sacked on the last play by Dante Verdaro. So they have been able to close this season. Um, you know, here's an opportunity for some of these younger guys to step up to join this winning culture and, uh, and help finish one off, seal a, uh, a nice homecoming victory for the Friars. Yeah, Ian Toussaint there with the reception. As look out, Nash is blowing up. Looked like Sean Rooney. Yeah, man, the finished sophomore. Finished that one off. What a great legacy for the Rooneys. His dad, Eugene, played with Pat Dean on the 88 Fordham Prep team. A little bit of a smaller version of James Rice, who is, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, you talk about the future. How much do you love that if you're Patty Dean and the Rams? You've got a pair of sophomores in Rice and Rooney, number 20, for Fordham Prep. 44 and 20, those are sophomore middle linebackers, buddy. And you watch them out there. They, they look seasoned. They're playing out there like they're seniors. And right now they're going up against some guys, you know, juniors, sophomores, younger guys for St. Anthony's, and their experience really shows. A run up the middle. And, you know, I, I know it's a, a change of scenery. It's a different cast out there on offense for St. Anthony's. But, um, you know, when I was playing football at, at Clemson, I remember that Coach Sweeney used to always remind us, you got to play to the standard. That standard doesn't change because the second string, the third string's in the game. you got to make the most of every opportunity. And remember, you're representing the Friars when you're out there. So I think Coach Minucci is going to really look for his younger guys to get something going uh, after that incredible first half on offense, really stagnating right now. Throw over the middle. That's complete for a first down. And I wonder... 
Pat, if you were in the locker room before the game, because that's exactly what Manucci said his message was going to be to the team, you know, where he said it's, it's a we, not a me, right? We've got to keep that mentality, that team mentality going as we've seen throughout the year, and we've seen it certainly here through three quarters as well. We'll take a break here in Cy Donnelly Field. It is 35-7. St. Anthony's with the lead. You're watching this New York Catholic Football League showdown presented by Catholic Health on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see a region that lives, feels, and pulses with energy. But before it all, we see you, because it's your lives that breathe life into this island. At Catholic Health, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body, because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. We welcome you back for the final quarter here out in South Huntington. 35-7 for the Friars. They did their business early, Pat Godfrey, and looking to remain undefeated. And First handoff of the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think for Coach Minucci, look at it. Seal off this victory. See your guys really out there performing with, with some young guys getting opportunities that, that aren't always in there. And really key thing, make sure everyone stays healthy. you got a lot more to play for. Um, and just a quick reminder for anybody looking to make sure that they stay on top of their health, Catholic Health, one of the best places to do so. Proud sponsor of our Catholic League coverage here tonight. Malik with the carry and throughout the season as well. Special thanks to Catholic Health for that. And I think that's the best part of tonight too, right? You, you, you get your starters. They do their job in the first half. You get them on the bench. As you mentioned, nobody, you know, you're hoping for no injuries, especially among your key guys. And now you get other guys a chance. And listen, a lot of these guys here, they battle all week, right? Like maybe they're playing scout team, but now they get a chance under the lights on homecoming as an interception. There is Wood with the pick. Will Wood. The junior. And, you know, Will Wood had a, a huge game last week against Chaminade, especially out on the perimeter defending bubble screens. Here gets the opportunity to step in front of the pass by the inexperienced sophomore quarterback staring down his receiver a little bit. And uh, that's flawless execution right there for Will Wood. He mentioned a 10-6 loss up at Coffee Field for Fordham Prep. And, you know, Dean said... He loved what he saw defensively, and he said the same thing happened last year. They're, they're turning it on now at this part of the season. They played a really solid game defensively. They rallied to the ball. They were tough against the run. They had guys in the right spot. They were making open field tackles. Felt the defense really turned the corner. Obviously, you had more head getting banged up as your QB. You had three and four deep drives as well, you know, Pat, and, and, and those were – uh, you had a couple penalties. You had a blocked field goal attempt as English gets to the outside, lowers the shoulder, and gets past the 40-yard line. Another great run there by Charlie English. But there were opportunities to take that game, right, if you are Fordham. Again, you had those red zones that came without a score. Wood ends up uh, getting the score late after... Uh, he had a, that fumble recovery in the end zone, Wood did late, and after Creo had the eight-yard touchdown and Tim Tomlinson had the 27-yard field goal for Chaminade, but certainly put a scare into a Flyer team who just a week prior we saw beat Cardinal Hayes at home. Exactly, you know, and uh, it, j it just kind of shows you how tight everything is in this Catholic League, the fact that St. Anthony's only won by six points up in the Bronx at Cardinal Hayes last week versus a team that you know had lost to Chaminade. You flip that around, Fordham Prep almost beat Chaminade last week at home. And, uh, you know, I'm really impressed, you know, not for nothing with Fordham's ability tonight to come out and play a completely different game in the second half. You know, they've been pounding it, uh, really giving English a chance to get going, get some momentum going. And, uh, you know, they're winning this second half 7 to nothing. Now, I know that doesn't make that bus, uh, bus ride back to the Bronx any easier tonight, but I can tell you, you know, that's, that's something to be proud of, to keep fighting and, uh, and, you know, succeeding as they have so far in the second half. 
Good tackle there by Davin Foote, the junior DN, the li uh, linebacker in the pass. That was incomplete. Good pass deflection. And that was Joe McKenna. He's been, uh, been pretty active. Called his name active. a few times, right? Yeah, yeah. McKenna's been, been real active tonight, doing a really good job. The senior DB, 5'9", 150 pounds, out of South Setauket. So third and 12 for the Rams from their own 40-yard line. Another tough situation if you're R.J. Hopwood, the offense coordinator for Fordham Prep, calling plays here. Don't love to get behind the chains, especially with your sophomore quarterback out there. But once again, they're going to call on Jonathan Bailey to, uh, to put it on him. Bailey gets to the outside, slings it over the middle, and that is intercepted right out at midfield. Long return as well inside the 20-yard line. And that looks like Luke Asheim, the uh, junior defensive back, 6'1", 175 pounds, and he just read Jonathan Bailey's eyes all the way, steps in front, and you'll see right here, Jonathan Bailey, he's rolling out, keeping his eyes downfield, but one thing you never do is throw across your body to the middle of the field as a quarterback. Good defenses will make you pay. And right there, the junior, Luke Asheim, getting his opportunity and making the most of it. Yeah, that was a touchdown-saving tackle by Anchetta. All right, that was nearly a pick six. So great field position here for the Friars. And obviously they're doing the right thing here, right? Like they're not... Trying to run up the score clearly, right, as we've seen here. And backups are in on every position. Handoff up the middle. A short gain there. Really nice play by William DeSoffi. Six foot one. Out of Manhattan right there. And yeah, not easy for Fordham Prep. A trim, it, just to get into the school, they've got that really difficult academic standard. You know, again, their biggest rival, the other Jesuit school out in, in the city, Xavier, they play that annual Turkey Bowl. By the way, this is going to be Turkey Bowl 99 coming up wow. this year on Thanksgiving. A lot of great history. Obviously, you know, at the university level, Vince Lombardi, former coach at Fordham. Want to... Remind the folks here to stick around post game. It is the Guac Shop post game show. Guac Shop, five locations throughout Nassau County Garden City, Jericho, Wanta, Freeport, and New Hyde Park. So the Massapequa boys having their Guac Shop lunch. Having a fun time as well. So we'll stick around for that post game show here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Third and five for the Friars. Incomplete. Nash looking for Toussaint. And yeah, to go back to that Turkey Bowl, man, 99 years of the Turkey Bowl. The only year they didn't play was the COVID year. And what they did that year, they played it uh, virtually, right? <laughs> little, little, little video game action there uh, in that one. And, uh, you know, I want to also, while we have an opportunity, thank the folks at Yes Network. I want to remind everybody that Varsity Media is excited to be teaming up with the Yes Network app. We bring high school football games to even more fans. Our broadcasts are now simulcast on the Yes Network app. This game, uh, we've had previous games, multiple games going forward. You want to uh, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. You want to follow us on our social media handles. Find out our upcoming schedule which we could actually throw, uh, show you as well in a moment. But, but certainly thanks, man, for, to, to the Yes app absolutely. To, to bring high school football to, to, to the masses. You know, what is Yes all about, Yankees Entertainment Sports? It's about championships, right? The, the greatest winning culture in all of sports is right there at the Yankees. And you know what? We're bringing the Catholic League championships to you this year right at home on the Yes Network. It's only right, and uh, couldn't be more pumped to do so. A lot of these games as well are going to be on the – Yes, Network app, Zavarian and St. Francis Prep tomorrow night from Mitchell Athletic Complex. 
A great rivalry game out in Seville, West Hampton and Seville next Friday night. Port Washington and Syosset and Nassau Conference 1. More Catholic and Prep. New Hyde Park Garden City, St. Peter's and Christ the King. All right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. QB keeper. Going to push forward here inside the final six minutes and counting of this fourth quarter. You know, Dylan, looking forward to binging some varsity media all weekend, as I always do. But one thing I've really loved so far this season is getting to binge throughout the week on the varsity media pass, right? Because if you're looking for the best highlights, you're looking for podcasts to tune into, uh, you know, anything New York high school football related, you know, you got one destination to really go to that outpaces all the others. That's your varsity media pass. And I know for me it's an invaluable resource as I look to, you know, stay in tune with everything going on in New York football. Yeah, if you missed it on our podcast, uh, John Perez, uh, Jared Valuzzi, and I, we spoke with Nathaniel Griffith from North Babylon, who's now the record holder for uh, rushing yards in a game for North Babylon, huh. knocking out uh, – Jason Galt. David, no, no. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the, other, that's the biggest name out of North Bath, no <laughs> doubt. But uh, the record was held by Davian Quinlan out at Plain Edge and uh, 400 and I think it was 87 yards for Griffith. I mean, wow. that's an A game, right? Uh, remarkable stuff. Joke with him as well. His last game, uh, another like a 41 nothing win over Copeg, only ran for like two and change. I said, what happened, man? <laughs> he said, I didn't play the whole game. I, had to sit, I sat out. We had our, we had our backups in. Uh, so that was uh, incredible stuff. And, yeah, again, right here's a reminder. Varsity Media Pass, top ten plays, a lot of stuff from that man right there, number seven for Holy Trinity, Josiah, uh, as well. Yeah, he's uh, a highlights. Human, human highlight reel right there. Yeah, he's pretty much going to make the top ten plays anytime he touches the football. Uh, podcast interviews and more available on iOS and Android. Varsity Media Pass. Friday night here in South Huntington. We'll take a quick break. You're watching this. Actually, we'll keep it here as they break the huddle. They're walking onto the field. Now 5.58 left in this fourth quarter. 5.58 away from the Friars improving to 5-0 and in the league. 5-1 and overall. Just that loss to St. Joe's as part of that Battle for the Bridge out at Rutgers. And what a showing for the Catholic Football League as well in those games. I mean, it, it was a loss, right? And, and obviously, you played a win, so there was no uh, moral victory for the Friars, but they certainly proved they could play with a team like St. Joe's. You had that big win for Iona as well, beating Bosco. And, and then, and then uh, Stepanak. As well with a win over the Paul Catholic. Absolutely. Stepanak really easily handled the Paul Catholic out there at the Rumble, the Raritan. But, you know, I've been saying it for years, and I think it's really vindicating as a, as a New York football fan to see that non-conference performance out of the Catholic League this year. Because you know what? Everyone has thought for a long time that Catholic League, you know, in, in New York, AAA, could compete with the Big North, those great schools, the Don Boscos, the Bergen Catholics of the world that are really known at a national level. Um, I think Iona's beating Bosco was really a message to the whole country that New York football is playing at a much higher level than we ever have before. Before, and uh, I don't care where you're from, Jersey, Florida, California, the guys that you know we get to see every week on Varsity Media are, are up there with the best. Big sack there on that. On that play. But no, you're right. Listen, you know, and, and what I love too is on so many of those broadcasts on the MSG network, you know, Jimmy Cavallo and Matt Sims was part of that. And now Sims is a, a believer as well, right? He's, he was part of that fabric of the – of those North Jersey powerhouses, right, at Don Bosco for all those years. Matt Sims, you know, heavily invested, especially in quarterbacks in the local, you know, New York, New Jersey metropolitan area. He's put in some great work uh, at the Sims QB Academy with guys like Johnny Shepard, who's had such a great season so far and is going to be looking for some redemption once playoff time rolls around, potentially against these guys at St. Anthony's. But, uh, you know, 
you know, Dante Torres, another Matt Sims uh, protege. So, uh, you know, I think the hands and you know, the imprints of the Sims family are kind of all over the performance that we've seen, especially from the signal caller position throughout, you know, New York this year. Think about that, too. And just in the AAA alone, right, in the Catholic AAA alone, the top three – those quarterbacks are all incredible, right? Uh, Dante True. Torres here, Johnny Shepard, we know he's going to Old Dominion, and Will Curd, the lefty out of, out of Stepanak, Stepanak yeah. he's, he's still just a junior, right? <laughs> he's, so he, he's the guy who's coming back among that group. But you would put those three up, I think, against any other quarterbacks, not only in New York, but in the tri-state. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, to think that we're stacking this upon, you know, class like you know, last year where you have a guy in Henry Bielen come through Hayes, yeah. his younger brother doing some really good things there. And Henry seeing time at Duke yeah, as a true it's, freshman. It's incredible. And, uh, you know, for those who don't know, uh, that's an, a really amazing accomplishment to be able to get any sort of playing time as a true freshman at the college level. Usually such a big jump in terms of, you know, the speed of the game, the way everything moves, the complexity of things. And I think that's really just a testament to the kind of guy that Henry Bielen is and, uh, you know, was for all those years at Hayes, the fact that he was able to pick up that offense uh, at a complex system at Duke and, uh, and, you know, be a contributor right away. <laughs> This league, I'm telling you. So, again, we need some personnel here. <laughs> and that's the funny thing, right? You, if, if you're one of those dudes that are, like, on the, on the bench, right, you're trying to see time, you don't want to be hanging out on the sideline. You want to be right up next to coach when they call your number. Because you don't, you don't know, know when it's going to be called again, right? It's not a guarantee. That's a great-looking pass. <laughs> Wow. Sophomore showing what he could do right there. Yeah, the future is bright, man. Really nice catch by uh, Sammy Nassour right there, the senior. Love seeing him get in. The Beth Page native. The catch right there down, down the sideline. First and 10 from the 30 inside two minutes here. As again, we want to remind you to stick around for the Guac Shop postgame show. I can see Joe down there getting ready from the Guac Shop. He's got those hats. It's always one of the, the better moments in these postgame shows. Because, I mean, look, you're, you're a former, former high school player, former football player, right? Like the biggest cheer among the dudes is when they hear, lunch is on us. <laughs> free, free food. Free food. You, right? Universally, I don't care if I just played a game or if you catch me right after this. Free food, it's something you know, you're never going to say no to. And when you're talking guac shop as that free food, that's like a little slice of heaven for these guys. So you know, the rich get richer. St. Anthony's out here with a great performance of their homecoming. And some of them are going to get to uh, enjoy that creamy green delight we know as guacamole. Yeah, so St. Anthony's will improve to 5-1, five 5-0 and one, five and oh in the Catholic League. Again, they're only lost that loss to St. Joe's and Fordham Prep. Again, I think, we, I think you leave here and you lick your wounds and you say, we just lost to Kellenberg, Moore Catholic, Holy Trinity, Chaminade, and St. Anthony's. All right, St. Peter's is, it, again, no disrespect to the Eagles at St. Peter's, right? They're not St. Anthony's. Right? They're not more Catholic. They're not Holy Trinity. So I, I, think, I think despite maybe the storm, you see, you see those, those, those bright clouds. You, you see the, the, the sun breaking out. And I think you have an opportunity here to, to have a really good second or last portion of the regular season into the postseason. Absolutely. You know, no such thing as a moral victory. I can tell you, you know, after getting killed a few times when I was in high school by the likes of, you know, Sayville and West Hampton, you can catch next week. Um, but, you know, never easy to take a loss like this, but at least these guys can walk out of here with their heads held high, knowing they, they pitch a shutout in the second half, were able to win that second half battle, and, uh, you know, that's really all you can ask for out of a double-A one opponent going up and playing the big boys, St. Anthony's at Cy Donnelly Field. Final score again, 35-7. Big day for a lot of those starters who we really didn't see, right, in that – in that second half, again, Torres, right, was only the three of three for, or not only, but those stats we gave you early on, right, three of three for 125 and three. Ruda, five carries for 99 yards and two touchdowns. Morant, uh, 
It's a, it's a good day. I think you check a lot of boxes if you're St. Anthony's because your starters got the run out. They executed really well. And then uh, your backups had an opportunity to play as well. We'll take a quick break. We'll bring you back for the Guac Shop postgame show when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts, a clash of styles, out to talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see a region that lives, feels, and pulses with energy. But before it all, we see you, because it's your lives that breathe life into this island. At Catholic Health, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body, because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. Welcome back to Cy Donnelly Field. It is the Guac Shop postgame show. And for that, we send it down to the field with John Perez. It's the Guac, Club. It's the Guac Shop postgame show here at St. Anthony's. A big win for the Friars. I'm here with our two players of the game, Dante Vidaro and Frank uh, Ruda. And let's start with the defense at first. Dante, uh, Leading the way in tackles, had a couple of sacks the last couple of weeks. You feel like this defense is finally getting together at the right time of the year? Yeah, we started off slow in the beginning, started picking it up. We started practicing hard. Coach Minucci does a great job giving us film and drawing up things that the offense is going to do. We practice hard all week and pays off in the game. How about the offense and your buddy Ruto over here? Yeah, they help us out a lot. You know, they get they we give them the ball three and out, and they're always capitalizing on when we're turning the ball over too couple of touchdowns in the first half. How important was it to set the tone? Oh, it was great. You know, coming out, not coming out flat, bringing the energy right off the bat, sets the tempo for the rest of the game, and it paid off. Now, I'd imagine you're in school all day. You got a 7 o'clock kickoff. You guys are probably pretty hungry now, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Are you pretty hungry? All right, well, we got a pretty good exclusive offer from Joe at Guac Shop, so Joe, I'll hand it over to you. So after St. Anthony's big win today, they have won a free team dinner. Yeah! That's right. Yeah. And you could do that at once all for ten ninety nine a person, but these guys got it absolutely free. Yeah. Guys, we'll go back upstairs. It's getting dangerous down there. You, Pat, you mentioned free food. And Joe from Guac Shop, he's got to look out, man. You know, every time I go to one of these games, I wish I could suit up. But after seeing that kind of reward at the end of the game, I really wish I could suit up still. <laughs> So uh, if they got room for one more at that free dinner, I'm going to be making my way over to Guac Shop ASAP. Great stuff from, from Joe and Guac Shop. Uh, really terrific stuff from them. Uh, again, it, you, you, I, I, I always la the, the reaction it always cracks me up, you know, just how excited. Listen, these are football players. These are, these are 
teenagers, right? You, you say fr- dinner's on us, man. S- some things never change, right? It's si- <laughs> the simple things in life. Football is always going to come down to blocking and tackling, and football players will always know how to I, eat. I, I see your eyes light up every time we have a food review, man. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I really would do anything for some guacamole right now. I'm going <laughs> to might have to make a quick pit stop on the way home. Well, we know there's five locations in Nassau County for uh, guac shop for sure. And uh, another reminder, too, uh, there, here they are, Garden City, Jericho, Wanta, Freeport, New Hyde Park. You probably could even, if you wanted to, just – Get a little bit from each, right? Exactly. Some and chips from New Hyde Park. Some, and I mean, some they're maximizing the convenience factor because you got the app, right? So just go right into the app. You don't have to sit there waiting for them to make their order. You know, you're going to walk in there, and they're just going to hand you the delights that you've been waiting your whole life for. Um, I, I need to find one of those locations tonight. I'm going to check their hours as soon as I get off the call. We're also going to let folks know about our upcoming schedule as well, games that are on the Varsity Media uh, on the Varsity Media's uh, YouTube channel as well as the Yes Network app. Zavari and St. Francis Prep, we keep it in the Catholic League. Tomorrow night at Mitchell Athletic Complex, 7.30 for that one. John Perez on the call, and then uh, I will be out there at Seville, uh, Seville and West Hampton. That should be a lot of fun next Friday night. Port Washington, Syosset, a Nassau Conference 1 battle. We're back to the Catholic League Next Saturday night, I'm on the call for that one as more Catholic takes on St. Francis Prep. Garden City, will they remain undefeated at that point? They take on New Hyde Park on the 29th at 2 o'clock, and we round out this portion of our schedule with St. Peter's and Christ the King on the 29th at 7 o'clock. I want to thank all the folks here at the Varsity Media Sports Network, Angelo Caezo and Ron Pierre on camera. The great Brian Butler as well, Ben Turchin, John Perez for my broadcast partner, Pat Godfrey, Dylan Butler, thanking you for joining us here from South Huntington. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Varsity Media Network.